Welcome to Max Stories, where we bring you in-depth things that go on with individuals, remarkable individuals in the country. And trust me, today's episode, we're going to be bringing you something that you've never heard before. Now, I'm going to be speaking with a young gentleman. His name is Emmanuel Amadou. And he actually did O-Levels 17 times. Wow. Now, guys, this is something you really want to stick around to see. So, with me, Mr. Emmanuel, how are you feeling? How are you yeah, doing, man? Fine, bro. You're good? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, let's go straight into it because, and, and these people are wondering how did it happen. So, let's start from the beginning. What exactly, you said you did the O level 17 times. Can you tell us a brief rundown of which of the exams you did that made it 17 altogether? Let's go. Okay, I did WAIC. Okay. I did NECO. I did uh, JAMB. I did NAPTEP. Okay. I did GCs, WAIC, GCs, NECO, GCs. Yeah. And this was in the space of how many years? Yeah, five years. Five years space. Yes. Seven. From 2010 to 2014. I know the, the time I wrote my own exam, okay. I didn't get maths first time. Okay. And I think my dad wanted to send me back to the village. Okay. Because, ah, you, you don't have sense. I don't know, but I'm just saying, knowing that. Uh, you have been doing these exams yeah. for a period of time. How did your parents take it? Were they um, financially supporting you to get the form again and again and again? And what did they say? Because I know that um, an African parents, Nigerian parents would react. Of course. Say, yeah, when I was your age, I was number first. I don't know where you got <laughs> this brain from. So exactly. what was it for you? Mm -hmm. how, how was it for you? How did you handle it? How did you handle your parents? And how did you handle your, your peers? Knowing that ah, everybody is either graduating or going into some, a school and you're not. Yeah. How did you manage this part of you? Okay, uh, talking about my parent and societal, uh, societal view concerning mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, my mom was the pillar behind it. Like, Mm. She was very supportive, in spite or even despite the the, the setback. Setbacks, yeah. Okay. She was. She just believed. Okay, I was going to get it right, and I was also kind of giving her the confidence. Like, I just know I want to go to school. Mm. Yes. Mm. And uh, like most times, she kind of compared me to with other people, mm -hmm. like maybe in church or people around in society, yes. like. Can you see this person? This yes. person has just graduated and you, you are still battling with whole, whole level yeah, exams. Yeah. And it's even got to a point, like there was a time she was kind of fed up, like she, she advised me to just, you know, go and learn a skill, like yeah, to just, to just forget trade. about school. Yeah, learn a trade, And yeah. maybe school wasn't really my line. Exactly. So, yes. and even people around concerned, people also mm -hmm. came and they told me the same thing mm -hmm. to just, if, um, if um, I'm learning mechanic or carpentry, mm -hmm. something will really be the way out. I should just stick to that. And she was ready to sponsor me in that. For you to go that way, <laughs> yeah. Knowing that but, we've tried this, it's not working, yes, let's try but, something else. But I wasn't really ready for that. Hmm. I just knew I wanted to go to school. Hmm. Um, I can remember a kind of scenario, like an instance when I met one of my colleagues, like yeah. way back primary school. Now he was a graduate, like he has finished school and mm -hmm. I was still writing O-level exam. Wow. <laughs> he wow. has finished university, he's work, he was, I think he was working then. So yeah. we met in the bank and yeah. he was like, wow, how are you doing guy? I, <laughs> well, where are you now? That kind of thing. So yeah. I just said, ah, like I currently work with uh, media organizations. I was, I just used. You just used that, <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> I said, I'm currently working with media organization as an advert agent. I mm. work with radio, TV stations yes. and stuff like that. Yes. Like, I gave him my card. Well, you were actually just, working there. Of so course. Was, so yeah. I, <laughs> I just used that to to cover up my flaws and mm. my setbacks. Mm. So even the the guy when he heard it, he was like, "Wow, you've gone far!" Like, ah, mm -hmm. wow. Well, <laughs> <But, laughs> you know. Of course. <laughs> yeah. So it wasn't really easy, but mm. I I just. <laughs> Let's even talk about the this the university okay. that you wanted to get into. Okay. Was it that? you had a choice university? Or did you get into your choice university in the end? Or what exactly happened after the O-levels had been achieved? What happened after that, when you got your 2014 and you finally got your O-levels? Right? Okay. So what happened after that? 
Okay, like after I got my O level, mm -hmm. although before the final exam, yes, uh, like a concerned kind of um, family person mm -hmm. got to know about my story and through my mom, and she was like, ah, "How can you allow this um, this boy to write and write, write over and until and this kind of number of exams?" Mm -hmm. Like he now explained so many things how we can go about it even if we don't have the complete exam like the complete uh, uh, um, results, results yes that that, ways you can then i can still be admitted in school then i'll cover up cover up yeah makes so sense. Makes yeah sense. so he now gave the kind of advice like okay like what he's going to do is that i should just um do this for the last time Mm. And I should go back to school because I, I wasn't really ready because I've gone to so many schools and, you know, I've, re I've done the kind of, uh, I've retaked, you know, going back to secondary school, mm. wearing uniforms, you know, going back, different secondary now, schools that is quite to rewrite exams, yeah. especially yeah. the internal exams. So uh, it's even got to a time, like from my story that went viral on the internet, like it's got to a time some of um, my colleagues were teachers in the school I went to retake, you know. Wow. It, it was very terrible. Wow. <laughs> and I was being addressed just the way they address teachers, you know. Welcome, sir. <laughs> 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 you can imagine. I see. I, I, it, was just, it was just um, uh, my focus and my dream that just kept me going because I wasn't really distracted, but mm. it, it was really touching. You know, and it really affected me. Mm. <laughs> it really affected me. No. Even along the line, like I, from the story that went viral, like I, mm. I contemplated suicide seriously. Mm. I contemplated suicide, but I didn't succumb. Yeah, about yeah. that. So it was probably because of the amount of depression you had yeah. bottled inside that led to the contemplation of suicide. Yes. And um, what was that major drive for you, knowing that? Um, suicide was like a way out yes. looking at the situation because you felt that there was no way out of this current situation of yours so yes. suicide was like the only option but what held you back why did you decide not to do that because it's the same way your mind would tell you that this is what your environment thinks about you this is how people see you yeah. you they see you as someone who can't achieve anything because we have a lot of people who definitely talk around us mm -hmm. you know so they would talk down on you they would always tell you that you can you could be better than this if mm -hmm. not for that they blame you mm -hmm. for the situation and judging from your story i see that it is a collective um, um issue coming from parents not being together yes. to the society not probably giving you the opportunity to you know there were different factors that yes. led to this exactly. so the suicide part of the story what, how, how did you come out of it? What was your, your motivation to say, okay, I'm not going to do that anymore? For how I was able to manage mm -hmm. depression and that didn't you know, allow me to you know, commit suicide or to succumb to suicide mm -hmm. was just um, because of the few persons I surrounded myself with. You okay. know, people who really see, hmm. like people who who see the best in me, like people who, who just see the qualities, mm. like things I can be in life, like uh, what I can offer the, uh, the even these are uh, the generation, yes. you know, and those are persons I just love to relate with mm -hmm. and you know express my feelings and mm -hmm. everything to, mm -hmm. to 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 get their feedback and also be uplift, uplifted emotionally and otherwise. Mm, so so you, you surrounded yourself with people who were forward thinking, who could yes. see the best in you. Oh, because nice. I noticed, okay, I noticed like most of, during the time all these um, uh, all these happened, mm -hmm. like the, a lot of persons were just, um, you know, blaming, sending blames to me and mm -hmm. you know, that kind of thing. So mm -hmm. I, I know, I knew this then quite all right. And that was why I was ready to, to just, um, kind of block my air, you know, to, to those, allow to those yeah, things, to those things then yeah. open my mind to people who are really ready to, to assist and, you know, to guide me through. So hmm. so that was the kind of uh, that was the kind of drive, yeah. 
Okay, so Mr. Emmanuel, I would like to. I see that you came with some of your results. Oh, okay, yeah. so let's see. Let's go through it. Because <laughs> I still can't wrap my head around it. The fact that you had to write 17 exams and, you know, that's, that's deep. In 2010, Wyeck, Neko, and Jam, you did all these yes. in 2010. Uh, 2011, Wyeck, Neko, W, that's GCE, then NGCE, then Jam. Yes. That's five in 2011. Then 2012, you did the YEC GC, the NECO GC, the NAPTEP, and JAM. That's four. Yes. Wow. Then 2013, you did the YEC GC, you did JAM. Then 2014, you did YEC, NECO, and JAM. Yeah. It's been an amazing uh, time with us, and we thank you that you came out to share this experience to people out there because you're going to be a big inspiration to young Nigerians who think that, hey, this is the only way out going through the exam process. You know, I only failed the exam twice. But Mr. Emmanuel Amadou, thank you for coming. And we appreciate you for being on the show and sharing your experience. All right, guys, so it's going to be an amazing experience. I'm sure you were blown away because I was blown away. And on Max Stories, we bring you exceptional things that you need to know about amazing individuals in the country. So, guys, until next time, keep it locked, all right? To enjoy more of this, our will go get videos when you just watch. Press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.